So 343 just dropped a W update in my opinion for Halo Infinite and I want to go ahead and talk about it because it's pretty sweet. But before we go ahead and do that, I want to go ahead and shout out everyone that you see on your screen right now for following me on Twitter. And because of these individuals, I'm happy to announce that the Joey Gaming Twitter account has now achieved 200 followers. So thank you all for following me on Twitter. I actually want to go ahead and start a new Twitter goal, and that new Twitter goal is 300 followers. And I know we can do it because right now we are sitting at 216, so all we need is uh, 84 new followers if I did the math correct, which I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know. Uh, if I didn't, then someone's probably going to roast the hell out of me in the comment section. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the new Halo Infinite update. So on January 30th, 2024, 343 pushed out this new update for Halo Infinite, and the update is called CU29. CU most likely stands for Content Update. I'm not exactly sure on that, so don't take my word. And, the, and basically with this update, they're getting rid of the whole season thing. So they're no longer doing seasons. Instead, what they're doing now is that they're doing... Uh, shorter updates like they're going to do more frequent updates but these updates are smaller and they're going to release content when it's ready so that's what they're doing part of this update is that they released a brand new operation called the spirit of fire and also in this update they released a new brand new map called illusion i'll be talking about illusion later so i'm only just talking about the content that's in this update they released a, they released a bunch of new armor cores as well a lot of it you have to pay for but they did include one new free armor core which is pretty awesome the spirit of fire operation uh the whole battle pass and yes there is a battle pass it's not as big as the uh, season battle pass because operations are smaller battle passes uh, most of it is free. I The only thing you really have to buy is the MA5 assault rifle. I could absolutely be wrong. And yes, uh, they this update includes some brand new weapon models. Uh, the MA5 is one of the weapons weapon models for the assault rifle. But they also added a new model for the sniper rifle, and it's called the Stention, which is the uh, which in the lore of Halo is a Goss sniper rifle. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, I will go ahead and talk about that later as well. Um, that's really about it for the content that they added. I think they added some new Forge stuff. They made some tweaks for Firefight as well, which, uh, side note, Firefight is pretty awesome. Not going to talk about it in this video. I think I kind of missed my time to talk about Firefight, but Firefight is pretty sweet. Now, I want to go ahead and talk about what I think of this new update, excluding the Illusion map. Uh, the illusion map is going to get its own separate chapter in this video, so, but I will talk about it. I'm just going to talk about the aesthetics, the, the update itself, and what I think of the new weapon models and stuff. So, first things first, I think that, uh, 343 moving away from seasons is actually a good thing. I personally think that too many games, video games, do this, right? And, I don't know, they just did it because Fortnite did it, right? And they were trying to mimic the success of Fortnite, which, hey, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong trying to mimic a game, but you have to do something unique as well, you know? I do have to say, uh, making Infinite free-to-play, right, was actually a really good decision. But I feel like that would have been better off if uh, 343 just introduced a credit system, right? Where you get credits by doing challenges and, uh, I don't know, challenges through the campaign or multiplayer, firefight, and etc, right? And then you can use those points to unlock armor and stuff. But I do understand why uh, 343 went down the path that they did. Them releasing smaller updates is good because it brings out more content and then it, it, it keeps the player base from... Uh, it keeps the player base uh, playing the game longer because they're getting more frequent updates. Instead of just waiting until a season, right, to release a bunch of content, what they're doing is that once something is done, once a feature is done, they're going to make an update and publish it, right, which I think is a great decision. For example, uh, 343 a little while ago um, unveiled covenant forge pieces and flood forge pieces right those are not ready to go actually you know what? i think the covenant one is ready to go uh, uh don't take my word on that i'm not exactly sure uh, i only did research for the uh, battle pass stuff uh for the new i only did research on the new battle pass stuff and that's really about it 
But uh, they introduced some new stuff, and they said, hey, this is some stuff that's coming out, but it's not quite ready yet. And one of those is the Flood uh, Forge stuff. So I think going down that path will be better for the Halo community, in my own personal opinion. One small critique that I do have for 343 when it comes to naming is the name itself of the update. So when they had seasons for Halo Infinite, they had a certain theme for them, right? And the theme was, oh, it's the Heroes of Reach. So they had like Reach armor or they had ODST armor and so on and so forth, right? When What they're doing now is that they're not really giving these updates any names now. Instead, they're just giving them something like, I don't know, giving them the name of CU29, which probably stands for Content Update 9, right? They're no longer naming updates, which is kind of a shame, man. I think it'll be a lot more marketable if they just gave this, if they gave uh, these updates some names. Like they could have easily given this the update for uh, Halo Infinite the Spirit of Fire update, right? And say, hey, this is the Spirit of Fire update, right? And I know that they're marketing the operations and they kind of market, they kind of. Uh, marketed towards the Spirit of Fire, but it's not the whole update. They were only specifically talking about the uh, Spirit of Fire operation, which is the Battle Pass. So that's my small critique. I think it'll be better if they just went ahead and gave these names, um, give the names of these, give these updates some names rather than just CU29 or CU30 or whatever. So that's what I personally think. So for the new armor itself in the update, I gotta say, all of it looks absolutely phenomenal. 10 out of 10, 343, probably the best armor sets in the whole game, if I'm being completely honest. This armor, right, these armor cores, they look like something that Bungie would made, right? Like, it looks like straight out of Halo Wars, which is insane. You know, 343, they're known for not making great armor design decisions, right? Like, take a look at Halo 5. Some look at the armor from Halo 5, it's not good. But in Infinite, with the whole fire team, uh, the whole Spear of Fire thing, armor set or whatever, pretty freaking badass. I gotta say it, man. I'm probably gonna get this armor core once I level up enough to uh, unlock the pieces. Uh, but I don't know. This stuff is gonna be pretty cool. I can't wait to actually uh, create an armor core with all this stuff, which, which is gonna be pretty sweet. The next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is the new weapon models, uh, specifically the MA5 and the uh, Stenshin Sniper Rifle. I apologize if I said that name wrong, by the way. I'm not a Halo lore person. Well, I am, but uh, not when it comes to the names of things. So, uh, the MA5 Assault Rifle, I saw the teaser image because they posted a teaser image before they did a live stream. And I was like, dude, that's the MA5. I really hope that they... Um, I really hope that it's like a new weapon and not just a model, like a model of the of the regular assault rifle. And uh, unfortunately, it's just a model. It's not a new weapon or anything, which is a shame because I would kill to have the CE assault rifle in another Halo game with 60 rounds and everything, man. I would love it, but uh, I guess we have to settle what we have for now, which is, I don't know, kind of sad. But at the same time, I'm glad that we can have... The aesthetics of a CE assault rifle. So, I guess that's pretty cool still. Um, the weapon model itself is absolutely gorgeous. Like, it looks so good in Infinite's, um, in Infinite's uh, engine, man. Like, it looks so good. It even looks better, in my opinion, than the current assault rifle in Infinite. Th that's all I'm going to say. The first person uh, model, though. Um, the first person model, though, I feel like it could be better. For whatever reason, the uh, the first person model of the assault rifle, it looks I don't know how to describe it. It looks top heavy. Um, uh, I don't know. It just looks top heavy in my opinion. I don't know. It just it just looks weird. But the top of it, where they have the ammo counter, that looks gorgeous. Just underneath of that, it looks a little questionable. But outside of that, it's a great weapon model, and I'm probably gonna have that part of my assault rifle for the rest of Halo Infinite's career, if I'm being completely honest. The next weapon I want to go ahead and talk about is the Stenson Sniper Rifle, which is actually pretty cool. And for those that don't know, in the lore, this is a Goss Rifle Sniper Rifle. And uh, Sergeant Johnson used this during the Battle of Harvest in the lore, which is pretty sweet. Once again, uh, I'm ashamed that's not a proper weapon. 
And 343, I got a question for you. What is so hard on actually converting these models into proper weapons? Like, you already created the models for it. Why not just take the models and actually create, like... Like, new weapons out of them. You're telling me you can't take the MA5 and put 60 rounds in it, decrease the the accuracy and buff the damage? You can't do that. And you can't add, like, the same particle effects from the Gauss Cannon to the Sniper Rifle? You can't do that? Like, I don't know, 343. I think you can do that, man. Like, I think three. I think Halo Infinite needs a lot more weapons, and just doing that would be a great decision. But, you know, I don't know. I guess that 343 has to make money somehow, so... I don't know. Hopefully one day we'll decide to go ahead and actually convert these weapon models into actual weapons because that would be pretty sweet rather than just weapon skins. For the map Illusion, I gotta say it, it's probably in my top 5 favorite maps of all time. And I say that because the gameplay is actually really, really great and it has some great gameplay mechanics. The only critiques, one of the critiques I have with this, uh, yeah, the only critique that I have for this map is that... The color palette is not great whatsoever. Like, this is a gray UNSC base. And, you know, I feel like there's a lot of gray UNSC bases in Halo Infinite. And I feel like this map would be better off if it was, if it was a Covenant or a Forerunner map. Like, I don't know. At the very least, change up the color so it's not a gray, whitish color, right? Like, you're telling me you can't make this oval green or something like in Halo 3 from rat's nest right you can't wait make an oval green color map i make make it look like halo 3 aesthetic you can't do that like i don't have a problem with human maps but it just not every map should be gray and white and stuff right i feel like this map should be a lot more aesthetically pleasing but it's not right but outside of that that's really my only uh, criticism that i have over this map this map the gameplay is actually really really smooth i gotta say it one of the things I like about this map is the gameplay. You see, uh, you have it's like a traditional three-lane map, kinda. Like you got, um, you have one lane down the center, and they have two other lanes. But you also have like staircases that go up as well, and you have man cannons that go over the the third central uh, the the central hallway, right? That goes over it. The central hallway, right? Um, I really like that part of the map. For those that don't know, the very middle of the map. If you're in there, it makes your character have acto camouflage. So if you're crouching, not doing anything, not shooting your weapon or running, then um, then your character is completely invisible. And that, as a gameplay mechanic, reminds me of Bungie era maps. Because back in Halo 3 and some parts of Halo Reach, there was something gimmicky about Halo maps. Either that, you have like a Covenant Plasma turret that would shoot you if you cross the boundaries and try to get out of the map. Or if you have like missiles that shoot at you from uh, the sand and sand trap. Or if you have those weird guardian towers that shoot laser beams at you if you get away. Stuff like that makes the map very unique. And having, and having what Infinite is having is actually really, really cool. Another thing I can think of that Halo 3 had that was gimmicky and was really cool for the map was kind of those gates, you know? Where you can go to the gates and you can turn the... And you can open the gate so it opens up the map a little bit more. Those are really, really cool. And hopefully that 343 will do something similar for their maps later down the road. Uh, but yeah, I really like that thing in the middle where it makes your character go invisible because it adds to the gameplay. For example... One game, I was playing Slayer, and I was just camping that whole area with an energy sword. People quickly learned that you can counter that by throwing a bunch of grenades, which I died to a bunch of grenades. Or you can throw, like a, th or you can shoot a threat sensor in there, and then it exposes who is there, and that's like, and that's actually a really good counter. I I'm probably gonna start doing that if I get this map again, right? And um. I don't know, it's a really good area. For Capture the Flag, Capture the Flag is really fun. I have played some really intense Capture the Flag games because it was risky. Do you either go straight down the middle or do you go around the sides? Like if you go straight down the middle, sure, you'll be covered uh, by the act of camouflage, but other players would be there, and it's like Grenade Central in there. Like, I swear, the I had this one game where I spawned the whole team... And the enemy team threw a bunch of grenades and they were trying to get the energy sword. And man, it was insane. That little area is 
I don't know. It's kind of deadly when you have like grenades in there. That's for sure. And when someone has a sniper as well, like I had some great snipes when I had the sniper rifle. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on this new Halo in uh, Infinite update. Overall, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I do have a few critiques when it comes to a few to a few things, but outside of that, this is a decent update for Halo Infinite, and I really hope that they continue doing stuff like this further down the road. Personally, I'm super excited for the future of Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is a hundred times better than at launch, and I can't wait to see what it's going to look like in the future. With that, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and see ya. Peace.